Hey everybody, in this episode, ah shit. <laughs> Are we filming? Darn. Hey everybody, this is Kevin O'Connell and in this episode, Hannah and I have a great topic on how to put yourself out there. What does that mean? Uh, what does it mean to build yourself through the connection economy that we are now living in and to over index on building your network? And we talk about five serious uh, and practical ways that you could put yourself out there that are very tangible, very specific. Uh, you don't have to create a website, but just very real five things that you can do. Anything you want to add, Hannah? Why they should get into this episode? Well, I mean, we've definitely had our own success stories for that. So. And other success stories. And we're interested people. in hearing others. So tune in, hear about what we have to share, and share your own thoughts. Enjoy. Thanks for listening, guys. Hey, everybody. Kevin O'Connell here with the Niche Movement Podcast with my co-host, Hannah Levitt. And we are super excited to jump into this episode uh, it was spurred by a good friend of mine um, that actually just took our Udemy course. And um, she said along the way, I think through some emails, you know, what does it mean to put yourself out there? Because one of the topics we talk about is pushing your comfort zone. Um, and so I'm going to kind of throw it to you first, Hannah. I'm going to kind of catch you off guard. Is, is, has there been a time recently that you've pushed your comfort zone? And would you maybe like to share that? Well, probably right now. I'm okay. not necessarily like a big talker. But you've, you've been on camera a couple of times already. Exactly. Sure. So, um, but that's definitely something I don't feel necessarily comfortable in. Um, but doing it definitely makes me learn a little bit more about yeah. myself, which I think is beneficial. Um, other than that, I guess in school, I'm currently a student at American University. So I get a lot of assignments where they're asking me for specific things that aren't necessarily my style or what I'm used to doing. Um, I'm taking the animation course this semester, and I've never used After Effects. I mm. barely used Flash before, so that made me very nervous. The first so you day, felt uncomfortable. The first day I sat down in the class, I was like, I could just feel my heart rate like rising, my blood pressure rising, and I was like, how am I going to keep up? Yeah. And then I started doing it, and I realized, you know, it's not so bad. It's kind of fun after all. So one of the things I learned from that is that it's yeah. cool to push your comfort zone. You have yeah. to do it sometimes to learn more about yourself and to learn new skills. So, and, and kind of what I just picked up is you were kind of in a, in a better sense, you were in a low risk environment, right? Yeah. Like it, you're either going to get an F or an A or like it, it's week one or two or three of the semester, right? Yeah. It's so not like the best. stakes are low. You don't have like a five, six, seven, like you don't have a big contract, right? Or for a client, right? Thankfully, no. <laughs> but like, what if that happened, right? Like what if next week we were like, we got to do an animation for a video, right? And it's a paid gig. Would and you feel uncomfortable? A little or, bit, but that I think would probably kick it into high. But you would be putting yourself out there. Like if I was like, hey, Hannah, can you do this? Yeah, and, and you said, there are some projects that we have that, you know, it feels like, well, good God, I hope yeah. I can deliver on that yeah. one, but I'm going to tell you I can. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of the whole thing like figured out afterwards, but yeah. The reason we're kind of talking about this whole new skill set when I asked Hannah that is uh, we really want to talk about like what does it mean, right, to put yourself out there? And the first topic we want to talk about is I think the very first easiest way that you could put yourself out there is learning a new skill. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of the things that we, I've talked about and that we might have been t talking about and we'll talk about in this podcast is might relate to the creative side, photo, video, social media, design, etc. But um, just because that's what we know. Yeah, it's what we know. Uh, it's what we're into. But you know, I look at um, some people I know are are literally learning coding on the side for free, like through YouTube, through Khan Academy. Yep. Um, we talked about in one of the other episodes, or, or it might be one of the upcoming episodes as well, is myself learning WordPress three years ago. It was a bear to learn. But I read and I, I stayed up till my eyes were you know bleeding and like mm -hmm. I learned it. And I think one of the easiest things you can do is learning a new skill. And there's plenty of great websites and resources out there, but I think if it's kind of that whole like Google that shit, like just, just Google it and you could probably find something that you can read about, watch a video about. Um, and the way you say easy, it's not necessarily easy to learn the skill. No, it's, it's not. It's, it's easy, easy to, to find how to do it. Figure out how to yeah. do it, exactly. So um, you just have to have that internal motivation to. Yeah, I mean, one of the skills I've just learned recently is just even, um, you know, trying to do some Facebook ads and, and you doing the Udemy stuff. Like, there's there was a bunch of stuff that I had to Google search mm -hmm. and read different things on, am I doing this the right way? Um, and just ask questions. But it kind of helped me get over that hurdle, which for about two weeks, it really felt like we're never going to get this out. Um, that reminds me, actually, of something my professor said one time. One of my design professors said that, 
in addition to whatever, like if you're working in Adobe or whatever program you're working mm -hmm. in, always have your internet pulled up to Google because yeah. that's your number one tool. Yep. If you can't figure out something, if you're having trouble, if it's taking too long, you just Google it and it either speeds yep. it up, teaches you something new. Yeah. It's really helpful. And just, you know, probably even going back this podcast, what we're doing, like learning how to use this microphone that's in front of us, um, finding out the best way to do it. And even what we're doing with uh, editing the audio with Dan, like making sure that we have everything. It's, it was all literally through Google searching, watching videos and reading, it, I really didn't ask anybody else. And so that, you know, exactly what I'm doing here, doing a podcast is pushing my comfort zone. It's something different. So I think the simplest way is, is learning a new skill and three to four websites that I would recommend for you guys to check out is, uh, if you're a creative type person, Creative Live, uh, both on YouTube and on their website is a great platform because if you catch uh, one of their sessions literally live, hence the name, you get to watch it and learn it for free. So I've watched everything on food photography, which I think I sent you a video yeah. on, um, to street photography, to depth of field, to client pitching and emailing, like all these, they have all different uh, topics, especially if you're a solopreneur or entrepreneur trying to build your side hustle. Um, and if you missed that episode or you wanna go back and watch it, I think they have some type of subscription or pay per video or per class, uh, if you will, and it's really well designed. Um, there's lynda.com. Linda, I use that yeah. for a lot of my classes. Skillshare, Udemy. Um, there's plenty of sites out there for paid stuff, but again, going back to what we were just saying, I think YouTube and Google is really where it's at. Yeah, and I might even be inclined to argue that you could probably teach yourself everything that you would learn in college for free or very, very yeah. cheap. Um, just by going online and doing the work, going out and finding the videos. The mm -hmm. Linda tutorials, that's what yep. I use for a lot of my classes in college and I pay tuition yeah. Yeah. and they still send me to lynda.com. Do you pay for so. the subscription or do you get access to that? No, I get access, student? but I just, I sometimes find it a little yeah. bit like cheating when my professor is <laughs> like, well, today we're going to watch this video on Linda. I'm like, well, then why aren't you teaching That's interesting. This? But wow. it is interesting. I, I'm not sure how I feel about it. The tutorials are great because of course you can yeah. pause, rewind, watch yep. it as many times as you want, which helps with like different learning abilities. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I still find it interesting that I pay a tuition yeah. and my teachers send me on to the internet. Yeah. So, and and to take it to the step, you know, the second step before we go into the rest of our list here, because we do have top, the top five ways is the first one. I'd say like once you learn that skill, uh, you know, say you were a zero and you feel like you're a three, four, or five at it. Mm -hmm. uh, for was example, when I, when I yeah, like when I was te when I was learning photography, you know, be like, hey, mom, dad boyfriend, girlfriend, brother, sister, whatever, can I take your picture, headshot, or coworker, hey, can I take your you know, headshot for this? Or like just start going out and, and doing something. Or if you're learning coding, can I help develop a website for you? Again, I think we're, we're being more in the creative field, but whatever it might be, like, especially if it comes to writing, like try using that skill then. Right. And you may not get paid, like I think you have to be okay with that, like you may not get paid, it may just be for spec of work, but just actually learning the skill and then asking like, hey, if there's anybody I can help, I know how to do this now. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's a great way for the really initial way to just put yourself out there. Yeah, and I think that actually like leads us into one of our other topics is yeah. that in addition to learning a new skill, to using connections that you already have, mm -hmm. using people that you know that are interested in the same things or mm -hmm. having in in some sort of you know career yeah. that you want, yeah. just tapping into that potential. Yeah. Uh, the thing that we were going to start out with here is like we live in a connection economy. Seth Godin has said that he's a big fan of mine. He puts out a lot of great content, daily blog and, and a lot of great books, but we live in a connection economy. And I think um, we say it every time, but it's like that one is better than zero and one opportunity can lead to another. That could be one interview, one job offer, one chance of like getting on a committee in your job or one client that you get. And um, really it's how can you take everything we talk about putting yourself out there and, and meeting people and find out how you could potentially work with them or get to know them and maybe there's an opportunity. And I think the biggest thing everybody has to understand is that it may not be now. Like it could be six months from now, 10 months from now, 12 months from now, four years from now. It's, it's really the long-term thing, but the more that you can grow your network, five people, 10 people, 100 people, I think the more opportunities uh, that you'll get. And going back to what Craig Adams said in one of our podcasts is really, if you know your why and you talk about your how and why and you, you, you feel okay to authentically talk about what you do, mm -hmm. opportunities will come your way. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's literally like sowing seeds. Not every seed is gonna yeah, turn into yeah, a- And nor should it. Not everything shouldn't be transactional. Um, and that's a good point, is that you can 
go out and spread your message and yep. get followers who may not benefit you yeah. immediately, but it's still worth it to do yeah. so because you never know in a year, in two years, yep. they might need your services. You might need theirs. Yep. So to kind of correlate, to, to kind of throw right into to number two here is I have a really great story of um, an opportunity that kind of was somewhat in front of me. Um, being very shy and introverted, it, it's been t it's been a very uphill, tough challenge to do outreach and sales and to kind of put myself in that mindset and, and to kind of strike up that conversation. But I'll never forget this. Again, friends of friends. Uh, when the book came out, we had a we had a DC party and a New Jersey book launch party. And my good friend Stacy, who you might have heard us talk about, I think in probably like episode five or six of the podcast, she actually did uh, a call with me. Um, she brought a couple of her friends to the book party here in DC. I was obviously super grateful that she just wanted to like bring people to this to this this uh, this book launch party. And basically, I start like talking with different people, and I met her friend Joanna that she knew through her network. Um, turns out Joanna works for American University, which is where I go to school. So we're, and it's this crazy stuff that like yeah, now Hannah goes from there. Um, and we just started talking about, uh, Joanna is also a life coach on the side. We t obviously we're talking about the niche movement and career development side and we really connected there. And so I think about three or four weeks later, um, my wife and I and Stacy and her husband and Joanna and her husband, we all like just, we just met up for drinks. Cause we we're like, Hey, like this is, mm -hmm. this is a great group. Let's, let's, uh, let's meet up. She then was talking about her job at AU and I, I just was very curious. I just started asking questions like, you know, what do you do? What are you working on? What's, you know, what do you like, et cetera. And she said she had this big event that was coming up uh, about seven months from now. And it was a big uh, annual giving and event. that was about seven months ago. Right? Yeah, so, um, so this was in probably summer, you know, July, August of 2015. Mm -hmm. And um, I just have, you know, I think within that conversation, I might've mentioned like, oh, that's, that's great that you're doing that. I, I did some work with GW and I left. And, and again, I think, you know, Hannah and I were breaking this down as we were coming up with the topic for the, for the podcast, but I was like, wow, like I really connected with Joanna. I like her as a human being. I like what she's doing. Um, I love the work that I'm doing on the video and digital storytelling side. I kind of want to like find out if I could help her, but I don't want to be sleazy about it. Right. And I think, yeah. what'd you say? Like sales or this stuff doesn't have to be sleazy, right? Exactly. Like, like you don't have to feel, you know, like you're creeping on people. Mm -hmm. If you search them on Facebook, say like, Hey, no. I want to connect or yeah. I know in some scenarios it feels a little weird, but, um, yeah, I mean, just putting yourself out there, yeah. just connecting with people. The worst thing that could happen is someone, God forbid, interprets yeah. it as creepy and yeah. ignores it. And then in that case, it's probably not someone you want to work yeah. with because the way you connected with Joanna was because it was organically, it was through a conversation. Yeah. So that meant that once you can connect like that, you can definitely work yeah. with that kind of person. So and so yeah, so you know, two or three meetings then, and then just deciding, hey, I think I might be able to help. Sending Joanna an email. Mm -hmm saying like, hey, it was great to see you guys, et cetera. Um, if I can ever help with what, what you have going on at American University, um, let's jump on a phone call or whatever. And sure enough, like a day or two later, we talked for about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I told her what I did for GW. She said, hey, you know, this sounds like there might be a fit, but we're, you know, six, seven months off. And I said, sure, like if and when you need me, I'm here, right? And um, all you can do. Yeah, and in the mean, mean, meantime, I just kind of trekked along, did a lot of other work, and um, literally, I think it was like December 22nd. I, I think, think it was like it, the it day early before December, after right? I offered you the internship. Yeah, um, that was right before Christmas. Sir. I got an email out of nowhere, and this is kind of that like, it comes when you least expect it. She said, hey, Kevin, I think it's time. Talk to some people. We need a video for our annual giving day. Um, we connected right after New Year's. She was like one of the first phone calls I made when I got back to the office after vacation. And uh, we now are sitting here in February of 2016 and we had the amazing opportunity, um, our team to work with uh, Joanna, her boss, her, her department and meet some amazing students and alumni. Yeah, we got to meet the alumni, that was great. Yeah. So and, we ended up having a great time filming for yeah. them and our video just came out the other day and they are potentially interested again, which is what yep. kind of motivates us to keep trying is because you make one connection yeah. and that can lead to repeat business. It could just be yep. one time. It doesn't really matter. It's kind yeah. of just the concept of making that connection yeah. that really And matters. so I think you need to kind of, you know, if you're in a situation, whatever it might be, be one, I think I would say be yourself 
And two, if, if you see some type of opportunity, whether it's in front of you or it could be down the road or you just kind of connect with that person or want to help, I think you can't be afraid uh, to just ask mm -hmm. via email, via person. And I think you need to do it the, the right way. Um, but that's, I think, the second way of putting yourself out there is just if you see something, um, you know, find out about that job opportunity or find out what's going on in that department and, and maybe how you could help, especially if you have a full-time job, maybe you can help on a side project with another department and next thing you know, there might be an opportunity that opens up a year down the road. So. Yeah, and that kind of ties into just being vigilant. So like you hear yeah. about an opportunity, you might just follow up, so. Yeah, following know. up is key, yep. yeah. Um, why don't you talk about, uh, we've talked about it at length within this room, but like events and what that means to put yourself out there and what you were, you know, outlets that you've looked at and how maybe other people could use uh, different events and, and put themselves out there that way physically. Yeah, well, we have our networking event, which is hosted by Stoney's, which is this fun little bar in D.C. I think they have two locations. Uh, yeah. We go to P Street. Yep. And um, so we have a networking event there where we have a happy hour. People come. They can sign up. Tickets are free, but we do advertise on Eventbrite, so you yep. have to buy the ticket. Um, so having put ourselves out there on Eventbrite, I figured... Other people probably do the same. We had some people come in who said that they were new yep. to town. Some guy came with his suitcase. He just came from the airport. He yep. said that he saw it as he got off the plane. He figured he had an hour or so to kill yep. before he was going to his destination. So he thought he might stop by. And we ended up having a nice conversation yeah. with him. So, um, you know, just checking out what's going on in your local surroundings, whether you're on vacation, whether you're home. Um, Eventbrite is a really good way to do that. You can go and yep. search for free events. Um, if you're willing to pay, you can find events that you can buy tickets yep. for. Conferences, yeah. Uh, conferences, everything like that. So you can find something that you're interested in, find people that are interested in the same thing as you, and connect with them in a very or organic yeah. way. You can just meet, have yeah. drinks, have fun. Yeah. And it doesn't and even have to be professional, right? Like, like you were, well, yeah, you, it doesn't have to be professional. Like you were saying, you, have you be, and your boyfriend were like be. looking to go, like you were looking for something to do last weekend. Exactly. And you're like, oh, let me check out Eventbrite, right? Right. And it doesn't always have to be the, the networking professional, like you're always on type thing, exactly. right? Exactly. It can be for fun events too. Yeah. Like, you know, say you want to go out and have drinks at a discounted rate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there might be a ladies' night on Eventbrite. Yeah. There might be, um, whittlers, people who like to, yeah. Or you guys are you in know, the outdoors the, the and stuff. Yeah. The strangest yeah. things you can probably find it on online. Yeah. I think that's a, yeah. Really so you have a Eventbrite and the other one I like to tell, um, Twitter. especially college students is well, Twitter search mm -hmm. and then, and then meetup, uh, no matter the city you're in, you know, I've not used that one. It, I'm in the golf. I'm in the, you know, there's tech meetups here, here in DC. I'm sure there's one in your city, but whether it's tech, politics, writing, and it could be knitting, the most obscure blogging. Things, exactly, yeah. so. um, and going then, but I think the other thing is when you start surrounding your pe yourself with other people that are into what you're into, one, you get kind of fulfilled by it. Mm -hmm. Two, people know other people that are in that field. And um, it's just building your network. It's building your network and it goes back to that connection economy. But I think the other step that I would challenge, especially young professionals or those that are really trying to like get a new job or, or to get a job, um, is to find an event and like con find out who's organizing it, write to them and say, hey, I registered, I'm coming, looking really forward to it, can I help? Or hey, I, I have this skill, can I help? When that I leads go? back into the whole comfort zone thing. Yeah. I'm not a huge social yeah. butterfly yeah. here, um, and so that would definitely neither, neither are, have yeah. to push my comfort zone if I was to you know reach out to people yeah. or go to an event hosted by someone yeah. I had no idea who they were. Um, but that's how you meet new people. Mm -hmm. You have to push your comfort yeah. zone to learn new things about yourself and others. So yep. you have to get out there. And, yeah. and so that's what we're talking about is ways to put yourself yep. out there. That's one definite way. Yeah, and so that's the third way. Is, do something that you're uncomfortable doing. <laughs> um, the fourth way kind of piggybacks to what uh, Hannah was just alluding to is like volunteering. Uh, I, can't, I can't tell you enough of so many opportunities that have come my way, especially when I was working in higher education, of volunteering for committees within Rutgers University, uh, volunteering for the professional associations I was a part of. Um, those led to, again, growing my network, putting other things on my resume, connecting with other uh, other people. Like-minded and, people. And I feel like if you're in a situation like that, like psychologically, you're yeah. just with people who have similar yeah. interests, like yeah. who are going to be doing the same things, yep. who you can vibe yeah. with. When, when I got involved in recreation and, and within NURSA, which is one of the overarching associations, mm -hmm. I was still at my old college. I wanted to break into a large public school. 
and I met a good friend, Jess Ward, and she was working at Rutgers at the time, and she wound up being like my, serendipity was my mentor at this regional conference. I then like interviewed for one job at Rutgers, didn't get it. She then was leaving to go to Princeton. And next thing you know, she was like thinking of me and my involvement and recommended me to her boss. Got it. Like, it's just weird stuff works itself out. It is um, that all because, serendipity. yeah. And like, you're at a conference, I was like, oh my God, I don't know who this girl Jess is. I was probably 24, 25, I was just beginning my career. And I was like, oh my God, here's this big wig Jess from Rutgers. And she was the nicest person, still is to this day. Um, we were just connecting on LinkedIn the other day. And so I think it's those types of things of just not being afraid to volunteer and, and getting in front of people. Yeah. The, the last story I want to share is not about Hannah or I. And I hope by any means I know that we have our, some of our own personal stories, but I really think it could apply. It just takes some tenacity and some gut checking. And I think we both said it. We both aren't the most social people. I know I'm introverted at times. And Hannah said, you know, mm-hmm. you get the butterflies sometimes, but... And not the social butterflies. Yeah. Um, the anxiety ones. So this is a story from, from the book, but um, I had the opportunity to meet this girl, Nikki Yu. She was from St. Joe's University in Philly. Mm-hmm. I met her about, I think it was probably two, three years ago when we started the niche movement. She joined one of our programs and um, we stayed in touch. She actually was started the blog for us a little bit, but she realized she, she knew she wanted to be a speech, speech pathologist and help you know ES, ESL and help teach English as a second language. And she was on that direct track. She also was a student leader, but like if you looked at her, she was a typical student. She was she didn't stand out. She had no digital footprint. She was just like every other student leader. So we, you know, she basically realized, hey, I need to get on Twitter. I need to create a profile, and she, and she did that. Next thing you know, she she sent me an email. And was like, hey, I watched. I went on a Netflix binge, and she was really into shelter animals. And so she watched this episode called Shelter Me okay. on Netflix. She was really inspired by it, by helping, they were basically helping, you know, shelter, um, shelters with dogs and cats and stuff. She was super inspired by it. And she was like, let me jump on Twitter. And so I think she jumped on Twitter and found the at shelter me Twitter handle. Yep. She might've then like dug a little bit deeper and found out who the director I think was. And she just was like, hey, this is, you guys did a great job with the documentary. I don't even know if she asked like if she could help, but about a week later, the director tweeted her and That's was like, crazy. thanks so much for watching. Um, he saw that she was a Philadelphia student and basically was like, we're shooting in New Jersey, South Jersey uh, at the end of the month or in the spring. Um, I see that you're in a little bit into photography or videography, mm-hmm. like would you wanna be a PA, a production assistant? And it's that easy. Yeah, and so through watching a Netflix documentary to, to just having the, to decide to let yeah. me send a tweet then somebody getting back to her, um, so that kind of she wound up being on set. Yeah, it's the, it's the whole concept of this podcast is ways to put yourself out there mm-hmm. to just try it. Just try whatever you think of. If you want to email someone, cold emailing, yep. who knows? Sometimes it might work. Yep. The tweet, um, the whatever tweeting, it might be. I've had experience with that. I think in another podcast we mentioned, um, I tweeted at Katerina Fake, who's one of the founders of Flickr. So okay. I, I'm, that was cool. yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm assuming she's too busy to handle <laughs> any sort of, you know, social media stuff, whatever. And I get a personal message back and that totally brightens my day. Like yeah. totally inspires me. It was awesome. So that's because we're, that the, we're, we're real human beings. We're uh, human beings we don't have it figured out. We've said this before and I think we'll keep saying it. Um, but, and if you don't get a response back, whether it be email, in person, text, tweet, LinkedIn message, after a few follow-ups, if, if they don't get back to you, then they're probably not a responsive person that you want to work with or for exactly. or help. Um, so I think so that goes to show that the person, personalities. Filtering, there, there's yeah. more people, you know, some people say like, well, what if this happens? Or what if, like, I think, what if something good comes out of it, yeah. right? I'm one like, of those warriors. I like to yeah. say, what if this happens? Yeah. What if that happens? Yeah. But, um, and that's something my boyfriend does for me is he'll <laughs> say like, what if it works out? What if everything yeah. goes the way? And then that, that kind of throws me. I'm always yeah. like, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. I hadn't thought about if it went well. Yeah. Only and I, bad things. I would say if you're not worrying, then I think you may not be putting yourself out there, but I think it's good to have that pe- those people around you to kind of be like, hey, it's going to work out. And if yeah. not, we're here for you. That's something um, we talked about in episode uh, eight about fear. I think so fear, you have yeah, to have yeah. like a support yep. group to ch- just kind of push yeah. you out of your comfort zone a little bit, tell you that they agree with yeah. you, that give you that push to do yeah. what you want to do. 
So to recap here, I know we talked a lot about a lot of different stories, personally, professionally, some people that we know. Um, the five ways that you really can put yourself out there, uh, in addition, obviously, to putting out content and making videos and blog posts and websites, because that's the route we were gonna go, but we wanted to make it a little bit more practical with so stories to support it. Uh, the first one is learn a new skill. Plenty of sites out there. Uh, tweet us, email uh, me or Hannah, and we can. I, I could literally rattle off three to four sites depending on your industry to help you um, learn a new skill. The second one is don't be afraid to ask for help, especially uh, the story around Joanna and American University. If you kind of see something or a way to help and you kind of have that vibe, um, let them know that this is what you do and I'd love to help when the opportunity arises. Um, the third one that Hannah talked about is going to an event, professionally or personally, you never know who you're gonna run into or meet or help the organizer. And so Eventbrite and Meetup and Twitter search are great places to find those events. Uh, fourth one is to just volunteer within your organization, association, current job, community. Um, and the last one is that story of Nikki, like watching, she digested a piece of content on, YouTube, on Netflix, but it could be maybe you watch a video on YouTube, read an article on Huffington Post, or connected with somebody, don't be afraid to tweet them or send yeah, them an email. Just give it a try. It might work out. Yep. And um, that kind of brings me back to one of the questions we had from our viewers, Eric Redden. Yep. Um, he asked how you build an audience in one certain area when you want to do multiple things. Yeah. So I think it'd be interesting if we could have our viewers chime in on this. Um, what are good places to start for multiple different professions? We're in the creative industry, mm -hmm. so we know where to go from there. Um, say you're in the sciences, say you're in medical industry, where do you start? That's something I'm curious about. Um, so say like if I was a videographer who's super interested in medical stuff, mm -hmm. would I start on the creative side? Would I go to, you know, I'd look at like m medical conferences, like yeah, especially so I'm, I'm curious to know what yeah. everyone else has to contribute yeah. to that because I know what, what I would do, yeah. but curious yeah. to hear what others would do. Yeah. And, um, for every industry, really creative. Yeah tech, anything. So yeah, that'll, that'll be our question of the week is, um, what other ways that you would say you would put yourself out there? Um, or what's a success story you or a friend of yours have had? And kind of going back to Eric's question here, um, you know, if, if you're looking to get, get yourself out there in a couple ways, how, how would you get out there to kind of get noticed? Um, so that's, that's all we got. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, we'll be back in the next episode, we hope to actually have some live guests here in DC or uh, over the air um, because we've hit up three to four different people. And if you'd like to be one of them or you know somebody that we, you think uh, is taking risks, pushing their comfort zones and has a really cool story to tell, hit us up uh, and we would love to tell their story. Yeah, and it doesn't matter where you are. We can Skype, we can phone call, yep. we can have you in person, anything. Cool. Thank you guys so much. Have a great week and we'll talk to you next week.